forming us, enabling us, and calling us to ministry. Let us make you proud of us, God, that we honor you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Who called you? Who called you? Do you know who called you to the ministry? All of us have been called to the ministry. All of us have gifts. All of us. All of us have talents. That's the way God made us. Okay, so what are you? Think about this. Are you the person with the one talent? Did you bury that talent that the Lord gave you? Or did you take the talent and you multiplied it? You doubled it? This is what, what, was, what did God think for that person? He gave you one talent. Was he not upset? Do you want God? Is God pleased with you? Is God pleased with what you're doing for him? And this is what God wants us to understand. Regardless of what your talent is, your gift, God wants you to do it the best that you can do it. He wants you to have the right attitude with doing it. Don't be worried about someone else. If your talent is cooking, singing, praying, winning souls, preaching, evangelizing, cleaning the bathroom, whatever your talent is, God will give it to you. You already know what it is. Don't be jealous because of what someone else's talent is. Work with the talent that you have so God can multiply it. You can't do this on your own. We need God. And, and we can't sit around and worry about, okay, their talent's better than mine, so I, I'm just going to have a not-so-nice attitude. I'm going to do it, but I don't want to do it anyway. That's not how we go before the things of God. And this is what he's trying to teach us because there are benefits to using your talent. And God want to teach us us this. And if you've been using your talent or not using it incorrectly, God want you to repent and you always have a chance to do it over again. Okay. Now, this is what I want you to see. I want you to see I was um just lotioning myself down and I saw little sores and little spots on my arms and my legs. And so some of the spots had kind of faded away. And some of the sores you could still see there. And some of them, you couldn't see them. But when I hit it against something, I would get a sharp pain. And so this is the process that God want to take us through. He's trying to show this walk is not an easy walk. You, it's a price that you have to pay. We just didn't come out being clean and holy and without sin. And so God has to take us through a process. He has to work on us. Everybody's process is different. He has to take stuff out of us and put stuff in us that we need. He's equipping us. He's helping us with our talents. But some of us, we want to resist. And so I want to show you the benefits of, of, of doing what God wants you to do and showing you how he wants to help us with our talents. And so I was thinking about Moses and I said, you know, God called Moses and, and, goes, and Moses was, every time Moses would lead the people, they would go absolutely like they did not know anything about the word of God. And he came down from the Ten Commandments and they had a golden calf down there. He was so upset, he through the Ten Commandments and he broke them. Okay, see, this is what God want to tell you about your talent. And I'm going to show you three main ingredients. You know my GPS to a successful Christian life and to getting with God to illuminate your talents, to be about God, that relationship with God. I have three main ingredients and we all know what they are. We have to stay in the Word of God. The word is your lifeline. It's a part of your GPS. It's a spirit. This is not carnal. And that's the way God can reach us. We got to focus on the word. We got to speak the word. We got to live the word. We got to be the word. My second is prayer. We have to talk to God. You can talk to God just like I'm talking to you. God don't need a dictionary for you to talk to him. God knows what's in your heart. He created you. He made you. He knows your weakness. He knows your shortcomings. He's not like man. He doesn't judge you.
or he doesn't think because he sits high and look low that he's better than you. He's here to help us. And this is what we have to be. But no, some of us want to go ahead of God. And some of us think we know more than God. And I'm going to talk to you about that with Jonas. And we don't want to do what God want to say. And see, you're not going to get the full benefits of your talents if you don't. And the third thing is praise and worship. We got to praise God. Get our strength for somebody else. See, this thing is not about us. And worship is just that communion time with the Lord. Just like I'm in love with you, God, and you in love with, even with my shortcomings, even with my faults, you still want to help me. You're still with me. And I, when I go to you in worship, I'm not asking you for nothing. I'm just wanting to love on you. And I want you to love on me. And, and you don't have to worry about trying to find love from somebody else. God loves us unconditionally. Look to God. God has the answer. The Bible, the word of God has everything that you need in life. That's your GPS. And so I was thinking about Moses. And when Moses, let's go back to Moses. When um, he hit the rock. And look at this. Was he following his GPS? Because he did not enter into the promised land. Are you going to let someone stop you after all that you've been through to enter into the promised land? Is this a benefit? No. This is not the will of God. Then I was thinking about uh, Jonah. Attitude. Was Jonah not called by the Lord? Yes, he was. The Lord has sent him on an assignment. Like the Lord sends some of us on assignments. And we want to get ahead of God. He didn't think that Nineveh needed to be saved. Because they were so wicked. He didn't want them destroyed. He wanted them destroyed. He didn't want them saved. So instead of following the directions of the Lord, he went on a ship. Laid down and went to sleep like... Oh, well, God's going to do it anyway. He's going to do what he wants to do anyway. You didn't follow the directions that the Lord gave you. So what, how do you expect benefits from that? If you're not, doing, you're not using your talent, you just as well have buried it in the ground. And God is not pleased with that. God is not pleased. And so what you have to do is repent. God, I know what my talent is. And I'm going to clean this bathroom out. It's going to be spotless. Uh, that's what you told me to do and that's what I'm going to do whatever God assigns you to do don't have an attitude behind it don't be mad Jonah was mad Jonah was mad until the end even when he was swallowed by the well stayed there three days came out he hastily went there but he was mad he waited outside the city to see if God would destroy it don't work for God like that. There are no benefits in that. And see, this is what I'm talking about, that healing process, that GPS, those little scars and the sores that when you fell down and you got up and, and some of them left bruises on the outside, some of them left scars, and some of them left hidden wounds that you don't see, but you know you have them. And you don't want to deal with them. Oh, my mom was like that. My dad was like that. My uncle was like that. And, and that's just the way I am. No, it's not. No, it's not. That's the enemy. You don't want to be like that. You know that's not in your GPS. That's not in the word of God. We want to be what God wants us to be. He equipped us. All those trials. All those storms. All those floods. All those losses. All those hurts, all those valley experiences, they were there for a reason. They were there to destroy you. They were there to build you up, to get you closer to where God want you to be. Just like that old story with the mule, the farmer and the mule. The farmer loved that mule. Like Jesus loved us, God loves us. And he went to town and the, and the mule got out and the mule fell in the well. And the farmer tried everything. Look at God. Tried everything he could do to get him out. But we just keep kicking. No, we, uh, we like it here. We, we're not going nowhere. We, we, we running this. We're going to work this out. We're going to make this work now. But what did the mule do? Look at the benefits. I'm trying to show you the benefits from using your GPS. 
the mule, when, when the farmer threw that uh, dirt down in it to give him a proper burial, the mule took the opportunity. See, when you're listening to God, you're in the word of God, you know God is with you. I don't care what it looks like. I don't care how many thunderstorms. I don't care how many floods. I don't care how many fires. you still going to stand on the word of the Lord. And if the Lord can use a mule, how much more can he use us? The mule, every time the farmer would throw dirt in there, mule could have said, well, this is it for me. But he didn't. Even to the end, every time he threw dirt in, he stepped up. He stepped up. He stepped up. It's up to us. The benefits. He stepped up. And when the farmer looked, the mule was coming out of the well. God is good. It's nothing you can do in yourself without God. We didn't wake ourselves up this morning. And this is what God wants, a relationship with us. Don't look to the right. Don't look to the left. Don't look at the way somebody's looking at you because if you got the right spirit, you're not going to be concerned about that. Pray for them. Now, I want to show you some real benefits. Now, I gave you my GPS, which we said was the word of God, the Bible. We said prayer. Pray, pray. We need to pray constantly. And praise and worship. So, I'm sitting here and I say, okay, God, now I'm going to give you the word of God last and I'm going to tell you why in a little bit. We're going to go with prayer. Daniel was a praying man. That's what the word of God said. He prayed three times a day. How many of us, don't raise your hand, how many of us pray one time a day? He prayed three times a day. He was not ashamed. He went. He wasn't doing it for a, a, a public he just went. That was his praying place. Three times a day. And he prayed. North, south, east, and west. He prayed. Nothing stopped him from praying. See, this is the word of God. You have to have this rooted in you. Oh, somebody's looking at me. Somebody looking at me wrong. Well, maybe you're looking at them wrong. That's why you need this word of God. Somebody saying something about me. Well, if your conscience is bothering you, you should be in the word of God praying for them. Whether it's right or wrong, it doesn't matter. You see, the devil likes to have us thinking about these little silly things. The, the, the thing that said the little fox that destroyed the vine. See, he likes to take our mind off of what we really need to be on. So, here come, you know, when you're going through, let me tell you something. When, you walk, when you're walking with the Lord, <laughs> if, you, if it's an easy road, tell me about it. Because there's no easy road. Okay, somebody's gonna try to make you confess that you are uh, atheist. You're not like you. You don't believe in God, or you're not living right. You're just saying that you don't know what you're talking about. But if you got this word inside of you, you gonna know what you're talking about. You're gonna feel that anointing. You know that God is real. Nobody's gotta tell you that. And so here they tried to find fault him. Here they're stealing, they're lying, and they're doing everything else. So they're trying to discredit him. See, that's another thing when the devil wants to wants to blame somebody because of his shortcoming, he's going to try to blame you. But see, if you got the word, if you if you rooted and you're grounded and you stay, that stuff is not going to bother you. So, couldn't find any way to get to Dan, except for through his God. Except for through his God. Couldn't shake him by talking about his daughter. Couldn't shake him by talking about his wife or his husband. Couldn't shake him by talking about him. But about his God. And that's the way we should be. That's the way we should be. Falling over with the word of God. Falling over with. I'm the Bible. I'm the walking Bible. Hallelujah. That's what God want. So they tried to trick. So they tricked the, uh, the king. And signed under the decree. That nobody could pray. For 30 days. Now, how many of us can go without praying for 30 days? Huh. I tell you what's going to happen. And that's what they wanted to happen. But Daniel said no. He had the word in him. My God. My God. I'm, as, soon as, he, as soon as he heard the petition, he didn't go hide. Some of us will be hiding. And what, 30 days? We can go 30 days. Nobody going to know. But no, he didn't say that. He went right to his wonder, north, south, east, and west, and praying hard. He probably prayed harder. If I was him, I'd have prayed harder. He prayed hard. So here they come to get him. 
They thought they had it. See, that's what the devil do. But everything that the devil mean for bad, God turned that thing around for your good. So these are the benefits. So here they had lions. See what I'm saying? When you walk for the Lord, <laughs> they're going to be tasked. They're going to be tried. So stop crying. Stop crying. Stop complaining. That's what the enemy wants. Lions. Have you been in a lion's den and the lion hadn't eaten? Come on now. This little stuff we're going through is nothing compared to what they went through to pave the way for us. So stop it. Think about it. When you go through something, somebody looking at you and you can't pay your light bill or you don't have no food, think about you not in the lion's den, the real lion's den, okay? Think about that, okay? The lions had not eaten. And so here... He wasn't afraid. You know, sometimes somebody trying to take you somewhere and, and you fear. See, that's what the enemy wants. It's a tactic. He wants a sin to come. The only way he can get his foot in the door if a sin comes. So Daniel could have been like, oh, I'm so scared. Oh, they're going to eat me alive. See, you've talked yourself to death and the devil's sitting back laughing. You've defeated yourself before it even begun. But if that word is in you, oh, you're going to be speaking the word. Hey, we're in a win-win situation. If, if, if God don't come, you should be going to heaven. Hello? If not, you got a chance to repent before you get eaten and say, look, Lord, I mean, I'm so sorry. But you're in a win-win situation. But the devil don't want you to know that. But if you're in this word and you're in prayer and you got a relationship with the Lord, you're going to know good, bad, happy, and sad. I didn't bring myself this far. I didn't cross every T. I didn't dot every I. But God is still with me. And he's still keeping me. My family, he's still keeping me. And so here they put him down in the lion's den. Oh, my God. They thought they had him. See, that's what the devil, he thinks he had. The devil doesn't have you. But you let him think. You give him you. You give him you. And... Daniel's in there chilling. He's in there lying, lying running around, ah, acting like they're crazy. And, and the people that's, oh, he's got, they're not going to be there in the morning. But if you're rooted and grounded in the word of God, you have a relationship with God. Hallelujah. You know that God is God. I don't care what it looks like. I don't care how long it's been. God is able and whatever happens. God works all things out for us. Whatever happened is meant to be. Just lift your hands and magnify and, 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 and keep focusing on the things of God. Who am I supposed to be praying for? Who am I supposed to be a blessing to? Not being concerned about being consumed. Hallelujah. And so here the king stayed up all night. Didn't eat anything. Fasting and laying before the Lord. Couldn't wait for in the morning. He wasn't even in the lion's den. Daniel was in the lion's den. He runs down first thing in the morning. Daniel, did your God save you? Hallelujah. What kind of question is that? Daniel's like, what kind of question is that? He came and he sealed up the lion's mouth. And what did it do? Look at the benefits. Everybody's got to worship Daniel's God. You see, God does things through us to get the glory. And see, the devil was fighting so hard. When you sit back and look at some stuff that you've done, and you say, wow, how did I make it out of this? How did I do this? God kept you. God kept us even when we didn't even have sense enough to, to keep ourselves. You know what I'm saying? To stay in the word, stay in prayer, look to God. I don't care what it looked like. I don't care how long it's been. You got to talk to this flesh. You got to talk to yourself because God is greater. God created it. And he know what he was doing. And so this is why we got to say, flesh, you're going to go somewhere and you're going to sit down. Devil, you're going to shut the doors in your house to the devil. Shut the windows. Are you not coming in here? Angels camped around your house. We have the authority. Angels following you. How many angels sleep? Angels sleep. You don't never say, hey, hey, angel. Hey, angel. You so busy fighting the devil. It's the devil. Oh, Lord. Here it come again. No, he's not coming. He has no place here. Okay, now that's prayer. Now let's talk about the benefits of praise. You know who I'm going to. Hebrew boys. Hebrew boys. Foundation. See, we got to have a foundation. We can't be shaking. We can't be building a house, house tilted all on one side, sand, and, and the boys not firm. 
See what I'm saying? We can't have no cracks in our arm. We got to keep up with the word of God. You can't go, oh, I'm, 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 I'm going to pray five days and I'm going to fast. And, and then 30 days, you don't talk to the Lord. You don't fast. You don't pray. You don't have time. And as long as things is going our way, and see, this is what the devil really likes to do. As long as you're happy, you don't pray. You don't pray. You just, oh, yeah, God is good. Hallelujah. Yes, I can tell you a word. Yes, 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 Lord. Yeah, he saved me. He saved everybody in my, oh, yeah. The finance, the money just raining down from heaven. <laughs> Let it dry up. Let your spouse leave you. Let your kids go crazy. See, don't you get on your knees and those warm tears start coming out of your eyes and, and you start getting real with God. God, I, I, I'm getting, getting ready to get put out tomorrow. God, my life's getting ready. Then you want to get mad at God. When you didn't, you didn't need him when you thought you had arrived. But God wants us to need him on the mountain, in the valley, in the storms, in the flood. He wants us to know that he's God. You're not in control of your life. He just chooses to bless you sometimes because he knows if he don't, he's going to lose some of us. Some of us, if he don't give us what we want, oh my God. Mm, 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 mm. So he has to do something. Like a little kid, give him a little piece of candy. Let me, let me, let me reel him on in back. Let me reel him on back in. But I got to give him something because he's too far gone. That's his mercy and his grace and his love for us. And so, Hebrew boys, they were some praising boys. I said, boy, you see Joe jumping all around? I said, Hebrew boys probably jumping all around like Joe. But uh, they said, what is it, David? They asked till his clothes came off. That's what they probably, they were probably praising. They were not playing because they knew the seriousness of praising God. They were no cute. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory. And as soon as you walk out this door, that devil fighting you left and right. He tying you all up. And you, you seeing all kind of dreams at night. He chasing you all around the house. And, and, and what good is that? Praise the Lord. You hiding all in the room. Come on now. When he's equipped you with everything you need. He's giving you a sword. Your word that will cut. The word of God. He wasn't afraid. And so, here they come again. See, it's not going to be easy. It's not going to be easy. Here they praising the Lord. And, oh, Lord, King Nebuchadnezzar, he's like, I'm God. No, you're not. I'm God. So, nope, you can't praise, your, you can't praise God. Thank God we are in a country that no one says that we can't praise God. There are people in countries that would love, you know, just like Trisha was saying, that some of these churches are so quiet and so dead. And I tell anybody, if you invite me to your church, hmm, if it's good up in there, hmm, they going to have to ask me to leave because I'm going to be lifting my hands. This hat's going to come off. I don't care. I was sitting there looking one time, a woman had a wig on. And the wig was flying all over the place. Hello. I don't care. If the spirit hits you and it feels good, I don't have time. You be ugly everywhere. Else you, go, you go to a football game and, and, and your team win. <laughs> you up there yelling and acting like you done lost your mind. So why can't I do that for my God? Why can't I serve my God? He woke me up this morning. If he had not have said, Denise, get up and bathe yourself. This body is dirt. It's dirt. It wouldn't have, it wouldn't have, it doesn't have respond because I say get up. God's grace and his mercy. And so we got to be thankful for the little thing. You know what I'm saying? We don't appreciate, we take it for granted just to get up. No, some people didn't get up this morning. We have to learn the value and the benefits of the things that God bless us with so that we can be a blessing to him and to other people. He uses our hands, our eyes, and our feet to do his bidding. He uses this filthy, dirty body full of clay. He uses us. And if we can't magnify him, 
I don't care what you're going through. I don't care how long it's been. But I tell you this, if you lift your hands, you won't care. You won't care about that because God is going to take you. These are benefits. He's just trying to get you where you need to get to. Nobody should have to prime you. Keep some water in you. I don't care if you got to go buy some bottled water. Keep some bottled water in you. If you can't get the word of God, then you keep some water in you, okay? Because it's hard to prime a pump with no water. I don't care how much you throw word in there. That, 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 that dry, oh my God. I see some people, they stand. I used to do the same thing. See, I can tell you, I just the same thing myself. Pastor, I see the devil is busy. Pastor, he called me up here for prayer. I ain't telling them nothing. If the Lord don't tell him, I'm not going to tell him. Well, who do you think you hurting? Whose voice is that that's telling you that foolishness? That's not, is that in the word of God? Is that in your GPS? Did God tell you that when he was praying? No. But I tell you this, Holy Ghost ain't no joke. Holy Ghost not playing with you. Honey, I can stay up there all I want and act crazy. But I tell you, by the time he finished squeezing his hand and getting those demons up out of there, I sitting there crying, ah, tears everywhere, looking all crazy. Crazy for Jesus. But I tell you this, I was free. Hallelujah. I was free. I was free. And everything, everything that the devil mean for bad. God's going to turn it around for your good. All you got to do is trust him. Trust him. Don't worry about the situation. Stop looking. Stop feeding the situation. Feed God. Feed the word of God. Feed your inner man. Feed your mind. Feed your spirit with the word of God. Oh, well, Johnny owed me $10. And, and I see Johnny there, got a new car, and, and uh, he, he didn't pay me my $10. The little foxes, stop it. Stop letting the devil. Tell Johnny, keep it. God got 10 times. What the Bible say? God, God got 10 times, 10 times, 7 times more. Don't worry about that. Be a blessing to somebody else. Okay, back to the Hebrew. That didn't cost you nothing. Back to the Hebrew boys, Okay. Here they say you can't praise God. How many of us go one day without praise? Don't raise your hand. How many of us go one day without praising God? But I'm going to give you a challenge for this week. Every day. Every day. Pray every day. Every day lift your hands. Every day this week. Lift your hands before the Lord every day. Praise him. It's good exercise. You know I tell you about exercise? You've been shut in with COVID so long. It's good exercise. Get on your knees. You need some exercise? Get on your knees. Right. Get on your knees. Right. Get over there two, three times a day. Look at this exercise. And God knows I can use some exercise. Okay? Lift your hands. It's not going to hurt you. It's not gonna, you ain't got to be, some people want to be so spirit. Don't, don't, don't even do that. Don't be driving down the road trying to lift your hands, hook up Messiah, and run into something like Sister Johnson didn't tell you to do that. Daddy devil told you to do that, okay? Now, and don't be trying to lay all out in front of somebody being spiritual. See, God is, is spirit. Just be real with him. God, I miss it. A lot of times I miss it. I just go to him and tell him I miss it. Now, let's get back to the Hebrew boys. Okay, they said, Nope, can't praise God. They're like, what? They're like, no, they didn't. Good as God has been to me. And if you don't know if he's been good to you, think about your children. Think about your job. Think about something. There's something that God has done for you that you didn't deserve it. That you did not deserve it. So lift your hands up. Just try that one thing. Lord, I just thank you for waking me up. I didn't deserve it. You could have woke somebody else up. Just one thing. God, I just thank you for groceries. I just thank you for gas. I just thank you just to walk, to move around, to see, to have my eyesight, you know? Just be thankful. That's where we got to be in a thankful mode. And then you'll get all those discouraging spirits. They can't stand praise. They can't stand praise. Oh, you start praising. So here goes the Hebrew boy. They went right on to praising their God. And so what did Nebuchadnezzar do? Yeah, so mad. But Nebuchadnezzar could do the same thing. What you mad for? What are you mad for? 
Look at these people. Why are you mad because of my anointing? Why are you mad? You didn't go through what I went through to get it. So what you mad for? You got to go through your own junk. You got to go through your own craziness. You got to take your own losses. You got to take your own bullets. Trust me. Because we don't share the same anointing. We don't have the same calling. And this is what this is saying about your talent. Jesus equips us through our trials. And, and he takes stuff off. Generational stuff. Stuff, slavery stuff. Stuff that you don't even know anything about. He's releasing you from that thought. Those things. Those selfish thoughts. He is helping us. Just lift your hand. Sometimes you lift your hand in the atmosphere. Uh, sometimes it's like a, a heaviness. Sometimes even in the church, uh, you know, there's a heaviness. I know some people bring it on in with them. Just lift your hands up, magnify. Those spirits got to run out the door. They can't stay in the presence of praise. That's why the enemy don't want you praising. You and your husband in the house. You and your wife, your spouse. You and your brother, sister. Who knows? And, and you, you're in the house. And, and the devil get busy. He jumps into one he can use. So if you like the match too, and you going to argue back, what, what is that doing? That's more fuel on the fire. And now you really want to confuse the devil. <laughs> Why they sitting up there looking crazy and arguing? <laughs> Lift your hands and magnify the Lord. And see, don't it confuse those spirits? And they like, what's wrong with her? She not, I can't get her the same way that I used to get. See, you've grown. You've grown. God is working on you. So here, Nebuchadnezzar tell them that they, they can't praise God. Listen, no, no disrespect to you. Listen to this. No disrespect to you. But I know my God. See the GPS. No disrespect to you. Some people, oh, you don't tell me what to do. Yeah, I, I know the Lord. I praise him all the time. And you probably haven't praised him in a week now, but you're just trying to show off. And so here they sat there, and they like, no disrespect to you, but um, I'm going to praise God. I'm going to praise him. And what did he do? He lit the furnace up. See, this is no easy walk, but I'm showing you the benefits because God is with you. They lit the furnace up seven, ten times higher that the men who threw them in there were consumed. So we're in the fire. We're going through. Everybody got a trial. Everybody in the fire. Everybody, whether you admit it or not, or whether you realize you're in the fire or not, but everybody's in the fire. Some of us kicking. Some of us running to the fire. Oh, getting burned all up and feeling the heat. They're in there walking, chilling. They're walking. And they tied them up. Some of you bound to. They bound. Stop bound and loose yourself in the name of Jesus. Stop wearing. See, that's that sin that came in to open the door for the devil. They tied him up. They walking through the fire. Here Nebuchadnezzar said. He looked in there and said, didn't I put three men in there? Look how God worked. But I see four. Now he the devil himself. How would he know that that's the son of God? Look how God worked on our behalf. These are the benefits. And this is what I'm trying to show you. Take your talent because God gave it to you. Don't be ashamed of it. Work your talent so that God can double that talent and increase it for his glory. Don't have a nasty old attitude. Don't be concerned about what's going on around you. If it's not in the word of God, then don't plant that seed. Hallelujah. Plant the seeds of the word of God. God said, I'll live and not die. God shall supply my needs. Hallelujah. I don't care what's going on around you. He was wounded for my transgression. He was bruised for my iniquity. Chastised with upon his peace. And by his stripes, I'm healed. Hallelujah. Stand on the word of God. If you read that word every day, you're going to have some word in you. Okay. Last, I say the best for last. Remember I said the word of God? What better illustrator than Jesus? Jesus was all three of them. That's why I say the best for last. Jesus was the word. Jesus spoke the word. Jesus lived the word. Jesus was the word. When he was 12 years old, his parents looking for him. He in the synagogue preaching. 
12 years old, he had the word. Man should not live by word alone, but, but every word that proceeded out of the mouth of the Lord. Man should not live by bread alone. This is God. So if you read that bird, and I'm, I'm challenging, now you can start out with Matthew, Mark, Luke, you can start out John, start out with Psalms, something easy. And, and just quote those scriptures. Just quote them. Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. You know, and look what he did with prayer. Look what Jesus did with prayer. He gave you a model. He gave you Lord's prayer. He, everything he did when he went out casting out demons, he prayed. He had to go to the Father and, and, and draw. And see, this is what we need to do. You can't go out there, and especially you don't have trouble with your flesh. You've been smoking and you've been clubbing and everything else. And those familiar spirits like to stay with you here. Let me tell you something. If you don't be delivered and keep your deliverance, they like to hang around so they can get a foothold in. That's why a lot of people go, oh, I'm going out there to the, to the red light district. And I'm going to bring them in. And you look, they sitting out there. See, see what I'm saying? You better make sure that you got your GPS straight, okay? Don't try to be too spiritual. Okay, so here Jesus giving us all kind of prayer. So prayer had to be important to him. Even when he would go cast out demons, even for direction. You know, where to go, who to pray for. It's a role model in the gospel. It's a role model. And last but not least, he always prayed. He always did praise. He told you when he cast out legion, um, he was sitting at the feet of Jesus praising God. When, you, when, when God does something for you, that's the importance of praise. Even with the, what, ten leopards? One came back praising God. We tell go to the priest. Praise the Lord. He's teaching us the examples and the guidelines. This is your GPS. Who called you? Do you know who called you? Do you know why he called you? Do you know your purpose? Are you doing your purpose? So if you have not been doing what you need to do, ask the Lord to forgive you. He's so loving. God, please forgive me. Go out there in the backyard and unbury. Uh, unbury, that's right. Unbury that talent that you dug that hole in and you put your talent in. Go and get it back. The devil is a liar. And you work with it with all your heart and with all your might and your soul. And I guarantee you that God will double it because you have the right attitude. Do you have a Jonah attitude? Do you have a, a Moses attitude? Do you have a Jesus attitude? Do you have a Hebrew boy's attitude? Do you have a Daniel? I'd rather have Jesus. He had all three. He had the word of God. He had prayer. And he had praise. And I want to encourage you this week. I want to appeal to your spirituality that this week I'm going to pray. I'm going to praise God like I have lost my mind. I'm going to praise him for everything that he's done for me and my family, for the church, for the world. I have enough. And we surely have enough to pray for. We have enough to pray for. We really do. There are people all around, people in your neighborhood, people in your community, people on your job. I mean, people in the church. We have so much to pray for. Every time you hear the ambulance go past your house at night. Every time the police go past your house. Every time the fire truck go past your house. Grace and mercy could be your house. But grace and mercy, so pray for them. Pray that they're saved. Pray that God will heal older people staying by themselves. Somebody don't have a meal. You have hands that I can't reach. I don't know these people. You would rather throw your food in the trash than to make them a plate and send it to them? This is what God is trying to get us out of ourselves so that we will know the benefits. Stop trying to sell everything. Give, 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 and it will give, be given back to you. Press down, shake it. People think this is just in the church, but give. You have a responsibility outside of the church. The benefits, it's not here in the pulpit. 
as you walking around, you in the grocery store, you see a mom with a child and she's begging for a bag of chips or a candy bar. How hard? What kind of, what, what, what would Jesus do? Don't just wear the fish. What would Jesus do? Oh, I got to pray about that. By the time you pray about it, they gone. You shouldn't have to, that, that's the time you want to pray. I got to pray about that. Come on now. God is just, you know, God loves us so much. He's invested so much in us. He has called us to the ministry because he loves us. And he, because of all of our trials, all of our shortcomings, all of the things that we don't even know that has gone on uh, in our lives, the hurts, the desires, the needs, the pains, he's just squeezing them out of us. He's just squeezing them. He can't take them all at one time, but because he loves us. And so all he's asking us to do is stay in the word, pray. And praise and worship him. He wants a relationship with us. He wants to be our his first love. He wants us to love him first. And then the other things will come. And by this I pray that you will learn and understand the benefits that God has for us. God loves us. Father, we thank you, Lord, for your word, oh God. We thank you for enabling us, oh God, for your ministry, oh God. God, we want you to be proud of us, oh God. We want to be an example for you, God. God, if we've done anything or said anything that's not pleasing in your sight, God, we ask that you forgive us right now, God, in the name of Jesus. God, we ask that that talent that we've not been using, God. God, we ask that you forgive us and you enlighten us, oh God, and that we will run, run, God. Run with all diligence, without an attitude, with love and adoration, oh God, for you, God, for your glory, God. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen and God bless you.